I do need to say that uh, you may say, oh my gosh, um, that's great future technology. Not only are we doing it now between city and city in the United States, let me introduce to you a gentleman who uh, helped invent a lot of these technologies on this stage and showing you how we're doing it from country to country right now. Ladies and gentlemen, George Litterst. Good morning and thank you. Uh, I'm pleased to be here as a Yamaha consultant. I'm also president of Time Warp Technologies, the company that's created the internet made software that's connecting the pianos today. And uh, I'm 56 years old and we were setting up last night. I thought to myself, I don't, I should be more privileged than this. I shouldn't be the guy connecting the wires and <laughs> figuring things. Uh, isn't there a 13 year old around here who could do this? And so uh, Calista did all the setup for us. Um, she did. We do have a turnkey uh, situation here, I can assure you. Um, but I am a very privileged person. This is my studio in Rehoboth, Massachusetts. I have one of these wonderful disc of your pianos, and I use Skype and interactive software that we've created. Um, but I think it's fair to ask the question, uh, what about people who live in resource-deprived uh, environments? You know, what about this technology applies in those situations? And what I'd like you to do this morning is to meet Kristen Shoemaker. Uh, she's a piano teacher, a neighborhood teacher in uh, Lakeville, Minnesota, a little south of Minneapolis. Uh, she has two nice Yamaha upright pianos in her studio. She's got a Yamaha digital keyboard as well. And a couple of years ago, 2008, uh, she made a trip with her family, with her husband and a seven-year-old daughter and a nine-year-old daughter, uh, across the world, 8,000 miles away to Zambia because her sister was working there for a period of time as a nurse in the HIV area. And she encountered what life is like uh, over in this part of the world and um, was you know, just amazed, of course, at the, the cultural changes there, uh, but also how poor uh, the region is in terms of the kinds of things we're accustomed to in our own country. So here we are in a location called uh, Maka uh, in Zambia. Uh, Typical domiciles look like what you're seeing here, and you'll have to pardon me for going through this quickly, um, but these are a few scenes from uh, the area of Maka. A little sense of technology here on the water tower, <laughs> antennas there. Um, and there is a school um, that's got uh, as many as 100 computers. There is a satellite internet connection. It doesn't always work, uh, but there is some emerging technology there that's taking place. Well, she uh, came back home and wondered, you know, what could she do to uh, assist the, um, the bootstrapping effort over in this area? And, you know, she's not a water engineer. She's not an agriculture expert. She's a piano teacher. And she thought, well, maybe I could teach piano lessons. And there's a gentleman named Gertjen von Stam, who's a Dutch man, who, with his wife, was a physician, had moved uh, to Zambia. And they're living there at this point in their lives with their nine-year-old daughter. And uh, he's a technologist, and he's an assistant here in this school. And she had never met this family, but she had heard about them, and she wrote to them and said, would you be interested in having piano lessons for your daughter? And so she arranged the donation of a Yamaha digital piano, a YPG 635, that was shipped in on the plane. There's a few scenes that's coming <laughs> off. There is Meryl, the daughter, who was subsequently going to take piano lessons. There's a mother, and there's a friend that I'll tell you about in just a moment. And here's the setup. They've been fighting problems with the internet sort of coming and going and, and whatnot, and they've worked on some time shifted as well as real time approaches to taking lessons. But you get a sense here of uh, what they're able to do off in the, the jungle. Well, that's all well and good. You know, a Western teacher teaching a Western kid from uh, Holland who happens to be living in Zambia. What about the rest of the kids who live there? Well, uh, this young lady is named Ms. Beauty. She's Merrill's best friend. Unfortunately, like so many children in this area, she's lost both parents. There's issues of disease and other things going on. And she's, for a period of time, been more or less just sort of wandering around in the community. But she's been taken under the wing of the Von Stam family. And she is now taking lessons uh, herself as well. There's Meryl's sister. There's Beauty. You can see Kristen there on the computer screen. A couple other scenes. Well, it doesn't stop there. Kristen Shoemaker had a young student named Luke, who I believe is 10. His family last year moved to Alabama from Minnesota. 
and so she's been teaching him long distance and is extending the application of the technology and as you'll see here in the picture is giving a joint lesson to both children at the same time and the report that we have from Luke's mother is that he just can't wait for these lessons uh, when they uh, can take place. I got a surprise email from Kristen back in January. Found out five minutes before my Zambian students' lessons this morning that five high-level Zambian officials, including the Minister of Education and the Zambian National TV, had made the five-hour trek to Maka and were sitting in the room specifically to observe and videotape the lessons. Locked internet for all 100 computers in Maka in order to have a good connection. The internet many works for part of the lesson. The Zambian minister is hoping to pilot this idea in other parts of the country. If you'd like to learn more about what's going on, I'd send you to makapiano.com. You'll see videos and other information there. I'll just leave you this one thought. Um, Kristen's been focused, of course, on the fact that um, so far, this is uh, knowledge and musical skills and everything moving from one area of the world to the other. And it's her ambition that as this technology blooms and flourishes, that it will be a gateway, of course, for cultures to uh, move in the other direction as well. Thank you, George.